recording here is like recording in Satan's butthole. Can't have any fans on because Michael pick it up. Okay. What's up, narrative nerds? My name is Q, and today's video we're gonna be talking about organizing the people in your crusade. Let's get started. All it takes is some time and some clarity to find your identity. It's mind over everything. When it comes to organizing a crusade, it is absolutely the most important part, whether it's going to determine if you have a successful time of it or not. I'm going to give you successful tips in organizing your crusade, and by the end of this video, you should be able to use them and effectively abuse them. I don't know what the fuck I'm saying. So the first thing we gotta ask ourselves is, how many players are interested in participating? Depending on how many players you're gonna have is going to kind of effectively alter the way you go about organizing or structuring your crusade. There are a few different types of crusades you can end up running dependent upon wholly on how many players you have. If you have two or three players, maybe you have a more structured format. Maybe something like a tree branch campaign where it explains if we succeed at this mission, we do one of these two missions. If you fail at this mission, you do one of these two missions. This is typically best for two to maybe three players. And if you have more than that, on the other hand, you might want to do something that's a little less structured and organized as a tree campaign. Something more like a round robin type of gameplay where everybody plays each other. In my group, for example, we started at 25 points. Everyone played each other, and then we bumped up to 50 points, and then everybody played each other, and then we went up to 75 points. This is the way that I would recommend for a large group to play, but your mileage may vary. I'm so proud of me for getting that out of my face. Knowing who's playing and what armies they're going to be bringing is just as important. Certain crusade packs are a little bit more general like Pariah Nexus. They're more fitting for a generalized field or spread of armies. If you play Imperial Chaos or Xenos type armies, doesn't really matter, there's something in there for everyone. Where this Crusade pack is a little bit more focused on Imperial Chaos struggle and it has this theme of faith. Not really applicable if you're playing something like uh, Tyranids. <laughs> You also want to have at least one commissar or someone who is going to be a rules judge for you. I recommend to have at least one per every three or four players. That way we have someone who can come over, judge if something's legal, knows the rules, or is familiar with a crusade pack. So that way if you have newer players or people unfamiliar with crusade, they can come over and direct them in the right well, the right direction. These people are also going to be useful because they can really help the organizer organize. You want a go-to person who might be able to take a little bit of the work off your shoulders. You see, organizing people, it's a lot like herding cats. Things aren't clear, precise, or dealt with in a timely manner. People just just attention all over the place and it, it becomes a mess and things have a tendency to fall apart. You D&D players know what I'm talking about. Speaking of organizing, you need to brush up on your communication skills a little bit. You need to make sure that you have a means of being able to communicate or talk to all of your players at any given time so that way everybody's still on the same page. Again, going back to my last little dumb joke, this is really important for keeping everybody on the same page, organized, and showing up to your crusade. We use Discord, for example. Absolutely not a shill for them. It's free, it's simple to use, you're able to message everybody at the same time. You can post questions or thoughts or concerns, or maybe there's something you need to link to, or maybe there's rules you need to share. It's a fantastic way of doing so, and it is a very useful tool if you're not already using it. It also has a phone app, so you can message anybody on the go. In addition to the organization and communication, it's also important that you help teach your new players 
whether they're new to Crusade or whether they're new to Warhammer in general, how to fill out their Crusade cards. I have a video, you can find it up there. You're going to want to help them out with that. It can be a little daunting and a little bit extra when Warhammer's already a little rules heavy. This is gonna be really important. And again, keeping everybody on the same page. It's something that's not difficult, but it can really help have someone walk you through what each step means or where you're going to be placing information on your crusade cards or your rosters. Or perhaps you like to use Battlescribe. If you haven't used Battlescribe, I definitely <laughs> If you haven't used Battlescribe, I definitely suggest checking it out. This is useful for new players, old players, veterans, crusade players, tournament goers alike. It allows you to make your army list, download it, import it, put it on your phone, have it ready to go, or you can print it out. In addition, you can also take the file you download from there and put it over to this website called Buttscribe. It's not as dumb as it sounds, I swear. This website is fantastic for printing out all of your rules in your army list as if you had the codex right there. It has all the upgrades, all the weapons, and all the abilities that you've given them, but you also have a neat little option that you can check off, and it gives you a small little section for all of your crusade information that's important to you. I'm gonna make sure to go ahead and link those uh, down below, so that way you have access to them and you know where to find them. They'll be readily available for all of you. Location, 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 location. You gotta have a location. Can you play at your friend's house, your mom's basement? Can you play, that's a really bad joke. That's such a stereotype. Do you have, I mean, unless you have it, that's really cool too. Do you have a place that you can play? This can be something that your commissar or your Santa's little helper can help you in determining where you're gonna end up playing. Keep in mind how many players you're gonna have, what days are busy for the store, and also, if there's going to be enough terrain. Ninth edition's pretty terrain heavy, and so you might not have enough access to it. All things to keep in mind when determining location. Remember that this is collaborative. Compromise is king. It's the end all be all. Mission is a go. The alpha and the omega Work with your players for the days that are going to be best. Get everybody's schedule in order. These things are most fun when everybody can show up and have a big old Warhammer day. But if not, try to make sure that the people who are not as capable of showing up every time have an opportunity to still participate if they're excited about it. Sometimes life gets in the way and you gotta make those tough decisions. Warhammer, birth of my child. Also keep in mind, work with those who are willing to work with you. If you have flaky players, don't base everyone's schedule around those players. If they get to show up, great. If they can't, that's unfortunate and I hope we see them next time. But for the players that are excited, willing to put in the time and the work to forge your narrative that you're working so hard on, those are going to be your star players. And those are going to be the people you want to work for. Don't forget consistency. This is the granddaddy of all failed tournaments, events, narratives, and D&D campaigns, and this is no stranger to tabletop events as well. The organizer, you can't flake. You're the leader of this. You're the one everybody's looking to to keep this train a moving. But that doesn't mean that all the expectations are on the organizer either. The players need to know, hey, I'm doing this for you. If you wanna be a part of it, you have to show up, you have to participate, you have to play. This is fun for everybody, but everybody has to participate in forging this narrative. If games get messed up, that's life. Just try and get your games in before the next weekend, or if you're doing a round robin event, go back, play them, and everybody can continue on with their 50 or 75 power level games. It's not a big deal. We have to accommodate this all the time. With eight players, I think, it, that flaky part with about eight players we have to often accommodate this so we do and it still ends up being a blast for everyone involved lastly have fun with the list building 
keep up with your crusade roster, celebrate the wins, and laugh your ass off at the battle scars. I said in a previous video somewhere nebulously up here that my Tau ended up getting a thousand yard stare, a, a battle scar that meant that they didn't take morale because they've gotten the absolute sh** kicked out of them. <laughs> it's really funny. <laughs> it's like this fun story of like these grizzled Tau who are like, you know, I've seen things, man. I wouldn't recommend them. Like, it's so funny and that's so out of character for Tao, but it's <laughs> it leads to a narratively good time and a really funny inside joke so don't take it too seriously and have fun with it as it was famously reported here lies the slain dreaded kill fuck dick smash that's gonna be all for this video thank you so much for watching today narrative nerds if you have any ideas, comments, concerns, or anything that you think I missed or would be a helpful resource, go ahead and put it down below and let me uh, let me know what you think by hitting that subscribe, smashing the thing, and doing the other thing if you're not a heretic. I'll see you next time. All it takes is some time and some clarity to find your identity. It's mind over